Hey guys, how's it going? It's Beginnings here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful weekend so far. Uh, today's video is going to be on Baldum, but before we get into the video, I kind of just want to talk a little bit. Uh, so in case you guys didn't know, my team, BMG, is representing all of the West in AWC. That means we're representing NA, South America, and uh, EU. So I fly out tomorrow, and I'm going to be on a plane for like i think 16 or 17 hours total so you probably don't expect a video uh within the next few days and i i really don't know what i'm going to be able to do it really just depends on the upload speed of the wi-fi at the hotel that we're staying at i am going to be there for just about a month um depending on how well we do obviously but for the next few weeks video uploads are going to be pretty slow just giving you guys a heads up <clears throat> Uh, like I mentioned before, today's video is on Baldum. I did start on the opposite side of my jungler and rotate it over to the left side because I know I have a Tulin, and Tulin Baldum is pretty control heavy, which means that we can potentially steal one of these small camps. Uh, we do see that they immediately rotate over, but we managed to secure the camp. Talanis rotates as well, and I just go ahead and toss her back and pop my second ability and flick her away. Uh, unfortunately, my team commits a little bit too hard for this fight. Zil does get caught out. You'll see he's this game. He really isn't the best jungler. Uh, not Zil specifically, but the person playing Zil. We do have quite a few issues uh, with objective control and just his positioning on the map. Uh, you see Tulin did sneak around and kind of hid in that bush until he could get a first blood. So that makes that level one trade not too bad. And then Yenna gets a trade kill onto that Maraud. So overall, it's two for two. Really not the worst thing in the world, right? <clears throat> so right now, uh, Dragon is going to be up in 15 seconds. Zill is clearing his bot side so he can hit level four before Dragon spawns. I'm just going to go ahead and kind of scout out the enemy jungle. I know that he did start um, blue side because he ended up on top side. So... Uh, his blue is going to be up somewhat soon. I know around the time uh, that Dragon is spawning. They are on it now, but you can see my Zill is down bot doing his thing. He's um, taking that Sentinel. He actually ends up dropping the Sentinel. I think it resets or something, so he doesn't even get the Sentinel and then rotates way super late. Uh, we do not manage to get that kill onto the Nakroth, and Zill really messes up his combo. I think he does manage to end up uh, killing the Talanis, but Sephira and Daochan lived. It was like a four for one overall, which really sucked. We probably shouldn't have taken that fight without our jungler, but our also uh, our jungler also should have been there in the first place. <clears throat> Now it's just time for reset. Uh, there are no objectives really on the map that are going to be taken right now. Tulin is pretty ahead level wise. He's almost level five. I'm just soaking uh, so I can hit level four as soon as possible. Uh, we did see Nakroth pop up and he decided to dive the Daochan for some reason, even after uh, Nakroth showed. Uh, you'll see he says like lucky or something in the chat. I go ahead and toss this Daochan because she walks up a little bit too far. I throw down my ultimate to make sure that Nakroth's ult either gets interrupted or he just doesn't cast it. And Joker lives with taking minimal damage, which means that we will be able to defend this top tower. I think uh, Sephira and Talanis are both in that little bush there. Yeah, you can see they both kind of showed. And they pop up here and start attacking my Joker. Uh, he ends up getting tagged by a Tell Ol or a Sephira Stun, so I kind of end up walking uh, up because I know he's going to need some help defending this. It's going to be really hard for him. So I walk up, I do some damage. We get a nice bit of damage onto the Sephira, but she pops her ultimate, so she's going to get away. Uh, that's fine because they're backing up, which means that we can clear that wave basically for free. Tulin rotates up, and I really uh, I know that we can kill because Sephira has no ult, and if I threw the Talanis, then she's squishy enough that we would end up kind of just one-shotting her anyways. I rotate down to clear this mid-wave, uh, and because there's really nothing we can do top right now, uh, Joker was low, he had the back, I'm half HP, uh, Dao Chan is definitely going to end up rotating, and uh, we didn't see an Akroth on the map yet. I know Dao Chan is in this bush, I'm going to go ahead and throw my ult down to make sure I hit that Talanis, because she is definitely going to be do, uh, doing more damage than the Dao Chan. We get the kill onto the Dao Chan, and Tulin dives the Talanis as well, and manages to get a nice little double kill out of that. Definitely worth there, the kill ends up going uh, to the Sephira, who is our support. 
court. I ping the Zoho because he really is never around. He always seems to be kind of lost on the map at this point. Don't really know what he's doing. <clears throat> I see that Yena has that bot wave, uh, but I want to get some nice little chip damage onto the Nakaroth because Dragon is up. So all the damage I can get onto him is going to help us secure the Dragon. He does have blue buff, so I know that his red is up um, just because I know that the way that his jungle clear works, that if he doesn't have red at this point in time, it means that he, it's because he hasn't taken it yet. We get some nice little damage onto the are in the skirmish in this mid lane, uh, but we don't really commit for too much. <clears throat> Talanis is in the river, but I can't really walk up because I don't have anyone around and because she slowed me, which means that she's also getting a movement speed buff. Uh, Tulin definitely goes a little bit too far. I think he, nope, he dies, sorry. Uh, Daotrin gets a three man stun, but unfortunately her team is way too low to actually do anything. Uh, we get a nice little uh, toss and we're just following up our uh, teammates. Like you can see why uh, Baldum is so strong right now. Just his cooldowns are so low, especially when you build Ring of the Fiend and you have 20% CDR. Like you're tossing so often and your second ability is always up. So you're super tanky to physical damage. Uh, that's, and one of the things that most pro Baldums do is they rush uh, CDR, 40% CDR. Once you have 40% CDR, your second ability, like if you're hitting at least one person is on like a two second cooldown. So there's only a two second window where you're not taking 50% reduced damage, which is insane if you think about it. Like it, it's busted, all right? Baldum is busted, 40% CDR OP. <clears throat> I see this Afero, but I don't really want to go onto her. I just want to reset. We're not going to be able to secure that tower, and her team is more than likely around anyways. Uh, we still haven't taken Dragon. I don't know if we're going to do that ever. Uh, Talanis is definitely way too far from her tower, so we will... Uh, start to collapse onto that you can see she's actually um doing a decent amount of damage to that joker just because she does do magic damage uh she does get the trade kill onto the joker but Sephira is way out of position and so is the stout chan make sure to dodge that little freeze and throw my ult down cutting off Sephira and potentially getting the dao chan i do land it onto the dao chan so we will get the kill onto her and i know that i have my toss up in four seconds so we definitely can kill the Sephira, especially if i am slowing her and we managed to get a three for one trade overall <clears throat> unfortunately we will not be able to secure the top tower just because we don't have an adc with us but getting three kills there was really nice it gives us a lot of pressure on the map meaning that we have tons of room to push out to farm to take objectives we see that nakaroth's blue just farmed but or just spawned rather but we will not be getting it um i just go over to the dragon to make sure i can get that little dragon's blood buff because I don't know, it's actually really nice. I get a really nice flicker toss onto the Talanis and Zill jumps in as well. And it's just game over for her. Because she died, we will be able to secure this tower potentially. I throw down my ult because I know Murad is going back and I know Daochan is there as well. I'm just, uh, I actually walk into the freeze. But if you watch in slow-mo, I think I ended up lagging. Um, I mean, I was mostly joking when I said lagging, but while I was editing this video, I noticed that my ping actually shot up to 150, and I did try to move to the right, but I guess the input was maybe overwritten by my auto attack, or maybe my ping was just a little bit too high. Who knows? Uh, Talanis greeds for kills and gets one shot by this Zill, and so uh, we're in a really good place still. Like, I died for a tower, that's fine. Talanis died for free. You know what I mean? Like these, these are the trades that we don't mind taking. <clears throat> right now would be a pretty good time to take Dark Slayer, at least once they are away from the bottom side of the map. Uh, and we have our ADC. We're just gonna go ahead and help Tool and push out this mid wave uh, because we want to create as much pressure. So it makes it kind of awkward for them, uh, for us, or for them to contest our Dark Slayer. We see Nakroth is uh, trying to cut wave, but we are surrounding him. Unfortunately, I didn't count his dashes, so I didn't predict that he would jump up. I wasn't really sure, actually, um, but it is something that I can improve on next time. I'm just sitting for vision right now. I know that they are going to have to go top to answer this wave eventually, and I want to potentially uh, catch somebody on rotation, but that's not going to happen. It's okay. Uh, it's always good just to be getting vision. I'm just going to walk up here, uh, and 
I think about throwing down my ult, but then I decide against it just because they clear the wave so fast. Uh, we have a wave down mid now, but I don't think we will secure this tower either. We are just going to back up. Like I mentioned before, not having a conventional ADC makes it pretty hard to push down high grounds. We do get a pretty nice pick onto the Maraud. I throw down my ultimate. Talanis does get caught by it, and I know that we will be able to get the kill onto her. Fortunately, I get frozen, but my team manages to follow up, and so we get a 4-4-1. The only person alive right now is Nakroth, and we have uh, Tulin, Zill, and joker alive which means that we will be able to end the game here uh, as a support i don't think you should be afraid to suicide for the adc like especially uh or just a hero that is imperative to a team's comp right if they have a heavy defense comp taking that pick onto kali taking that pick onto Solanus is always a good thing i hope you guys enjoyed watching this game uh, I know this is like my third Balden video technically, but the other one was a scrim thing, so it was kind of different. And I really wanted to get a video out before I left. So please drop a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. And I will see you guys next time. See ya.